Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating content migration with Kapow Catalyst. This is the Kapow Extraction Browser. The Extraction Browser allows us to interact with and extract content from the website. We can extract visual components from the website, such as images or text, along with non-visual values such as metadata from the HTML or properties from the browser such as the URL. The content of interest is selected visually and mapped into a structured data object with attributes that you define. This is an overview of Kapow's content migration process. The content is extracted directly from the website or other sources with Kapow robots and stored into an intermediate database. Here, the content can be formatted, categorized, and transformed to match the taxonomy of the target CMS. The content can be uploaded as XML by way of Rust Web Services, SOAP Web Services, Sling Forms, or whatever custom API or standards-based API is provided by the CMS. Content can also be uploaded into the CMS without using an API at all, simply by loading the CMS's website into Kapow's Extraction Browser and mapping the content into the CMS through the UI. These are the steps to Kapow's content migration process. First, a database inventory of all the URLs that make up the site will be created. A robot will crawl the website and collect all the URLs of all the HTML pages along with the URLs of all of the resources, including images and other binary files. Next, we access each item from the inventory database table. The resource files are saved off to the local hard drive, and the HTML is parsed through to extract the content as structured data objects. We then enrich and transform the content as needed before uploading it to the target CMS. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the extraction browser, which we've loaded our sample website into with the first step of our robot here that you can see up above. I can create additional steps in the robot simply by interacting with the content in the extraction browser. For example, I'll recreate the next step in the robot, the for each URL step. I'll simply select this step, delete it from the robot, and then recreate that step by selecting the site, expanding the scope to the entire page, right clicking on the page, Selecting the type of step that I want to add, I want to add a loop, a for each URL, and as I click on this, the step is added back into the robot above. I can now click on the for each URL step and watch the robot step through the site URL by URL. The next step in the robot will actually extract the value that we have selected on the page. So for example, you can see currently we have this text selected and the HTML down below, you can see the href value is faasafety.gov forward slash some content. So this step, extract URL, which is configured here, is going to extract that text value and store it into the inventory.url attribute. So as I click past that step, in real time, we can verify that the URL value has been populated here. The next step in the inventory robot is the is in domain logical step. This step checks if the current URL is within the domain that we're doing an inventory of. And as you can see visually here, this content is from the faasafety.gov website. It does not belong to the aopao.com site. So when I try to pass this step, Kapow Catalyst is going to let me know that we can't reach the next step because we did not pass that logical test. So we'll go to the next element in the loop, and that value is extracted into the URL attribute. The value is aopao.com forward slash some content, and that does contain aopao. So we pass that logical test and move on to the next three tests. The next three steps in the robot check if the current href that we have selected is one of these CMS generated buttons. If it is, we don't want to add the URL to our inventory. In this case, it's not, so we can pass by these tests and continue to the next step where we get the content type of the query URL, which happens to be an HTML page, so that content type is going to be set down here in our inventory object when I pass the step. Now we have the content type and the URL in our inventory object. We can now try to load the page and verify that it's a valid link. Now that we've verified that the link is valid, we verified that the URL belongs to the domain, it's not a CMS generated button. We can finally store it into our inventory database. Once we've run through this step by step for a single page and verified that the workflow and the robot works as we want it to, we can then switch to debug mode and run the robot and watch the content extracted from the pages, each URL and each content type, page by page, just as it would at runtime. This is the first of two extraction robots. 
This one's fairly simple. There's no visual component. We're simply going to query the inventory database that we just created and find all of the URLs for the resource files, such as the PDF files, JPEGs, etc. We're going to save all those files to the local hard drive and then store the location back in our database table. I'll switch to debug mode now and run the robot and here we can see each URL, each file name, and each file size as it's saved off to the local hard drive and the file location is stored back to our database. The second extraction robot goes back to the inventory database and this time we're going to query for all of the HTML content. After the page is loaded, I'm going to select the main menu to determine the category of the content on this page. This is done with the find tag step. Here is where the find tag step is defined. We're going to look for active item within the tag. Here in the HTML below, you can see that the first item of the main menu is designated as the active item. When I click past this step, that menu item is found. When I click past that, we extract the text and store it as our category over here in our HTML content object. In the next step, we define an area within the page as an article. We're going to have a loop that goes through every article on the page and it finds the title of the article. And that's mapped into our content object down here when I pass the step. And the next attribute is the subtitle. That's mapped into the content object. And then the article date. And as you notice, the article date that was mapped into our object here is in a different format than you see here in the article. That's done with this converter. This is one of many converters provided in Kapow Catalyst. This particular converter does a pattern match on the date and converts it into the format that we want. There's also converters for other types of arithmetic functions and other text converters available. The next step extracts the author and then we extract the content of the article. And now that we've fully populated our content object, we're ready to store that object into the database. So we've gone through the robot step by step for one article on one page. This is exactly how you design a robot. You load one page that you know has a similar layout to many other pages. You select the content on the page, define it, and map it into your object, and then create the business rules to transform the content and format it exactly how you want to see it and store it in your database. Now we're going to run this in debug mode and allow the robot to run through all of the articles on the first page. When it gets to the final article, It'll load the next page, load all the articles on the next page, and if we have any issues with the layout on other pages, the debugger will let us know. I'll hit play, it runs through to the 16th article and stops us at extract subtitle. Here, I simply hit the go to button in the debugger. That brings us back to the Visual Design Studio where we can see that the 16th article doesn't have a subtitle. So this is the problem that we've hit and we can simply solve this by changing our robot now. We can add a branch to the robot where we handle this case in a different way, or we can set a default value for the subtitle, or we can simply handle it with error handling, say ignore and continue if it's not a required field. Now that we've made this quick change, we can go back to the debugger and run it again. This time we go past the 16th article and we're going through all the pages. We're on the 14th, 15th, and 16th page. It's this rapid, iterative design process that allows you to continuously fine-tune your robot until you can extract all the content from all the pages as you visually verify that the content is formatted and structured to match the content model in your target CMS. The next robot uploads the resource image files into SharePoint. We start by loading SharePoint. We click our destination library, flight planning images, once we've entered into our library, we're going to now loop through our database of image files. We've populated the file name attribute with the first file name from the database. Now we can add a new item and use that file name in the file name dialog box. We then click OK and then commit and then continue to the next file in the database. The next resource file name is entered from the database. We click OK and then commit. This file is added to the library and we continue on for all the files in the database. After that's completed, we take the next branch in the robot. The purpose of this second branch is to collect the URLs of the images that have been uploaded. Before each tag step, finds each image on the page, and the following steps extract the URL for that image and then save it to our database. After we hit the 20th image on the page, the last image, we then click the Next Page button. We then extract all of the URLs for each image on the next page. We do this until there's no more next page buttons. 
and the loop is broken and the robot terminates. The final robot uploads the articles that we've saved to our database into SharePoint. We first load SharePoint, we query our database of articles, the first article is loaded into our data object, we now click Site Pages, click Add New Page, then we enter the text as the attribute title, the title is entered in, we click Create Page, that loads the HTML editor, we enter the text from the content attribute into the editor. Finally, we click the Save and Close button. After the first article is saved, we go back to our query database and get the second article and do the same thing. Click Site Pages, click Add New Page, enter Title, Create Page, and Save and Close. We continue through this loop until all of the articles have a site page created for them in SharePoint. If you have any questions, or you'd like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software. Thank you.